Okay, so this is also on Zoom. Anybody in? Yes. No, but let me just try to tone this up. Yeah, tone it's up. It's up. And then we'll, as soon as that happens, we'll start the meeting and we'll start with minutes. Mr. Dave. Yeah, one second. I downloaded both of the maps for that, for that uh, 197 to uh, uh, so that I could compare the two maps because when I tried to open them, it took forever to open. Yeah, as long as you call them back. That's exactly what I do. I can't, if I try to open just sit there. And I get a good connection, but it's just, it must be the whole. Yeah. yeah, the handshake or whatever. So I just say, okay, yeah, down, download it. So you're recording. Down, 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 down. Right open. Yeah. The funny thing I saw about it right. is the red outline came up when I first it's, opened it, but nothing recording. else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I know. And I said, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to get the exact same thing. Yeah, all right. All right. So, David, we're going to open our meeting up. Okay. Please. You want to read them? Go for minutes. Okay. Minutes, please. Do you want to say record that it's being recorded? Meeting is being recorded. Meeting is being recorded. <laughs> okay, first order of business is the meeting minutes from October 4th, 2022. I move that the CPC accept the meeting minutes dated October 4th, 2022. I have a motion. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, roll call vote. Mr. Pierce? Oh. <laughs> aye. Mr. Rimlock? Aye. Mr. Hagen's aye. And Mr. Jeremiah and Ryan are absent. All right. Can we uh, say congratulations? Oh yes, and congratulations to Jeremiah for having a baby. Well, his wife having a baby. Girl. <laughs> his wife did all work. We talked about that. Was so it last night? I had to mention it. Yeah. I said, congratulations. Halloween baby. Halloween baby. Really cool. Wow. Mm. Yeah. She's. That would be a birthday easy to remember. <laughs> so I no, I'm just. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> all right. So. Let's see. That's probably carrying eight. Danielle, you want to, we got 25 minutes. Yes. ZBA. We want to do the ZBA? Yeah, let's yeah. do the ZBA. All right, let's do the ZBA. <laughs> ZBA for 247 Main Street. This is interesting. Um, this is where Century 21 is, right? They're going to yep. have 10 vans. That means they're going to have 20 vehicles at one time in that parking lot. Is there enough parking for them? Yeah. And and the uh, real estate office? No, I don't think the real estate office will be there anymore, will it? It looks no. like it. Looks like, if you read further down there, it looks like there's a purchase and sale from Dave O'Neill to sell this to them. Oh, okay, to them. Yep. Read the whole thing all the way. Go all the way down. I missed that. I didn't read most of it. Yeah. You know me, I, I cruise through it fast. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You, you and your uh, speed reading. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so he's going to uh, contract the first real estate. Okay. Yep. Okay, well, on that note. How I mean, many, we're just commenting on well, it. Right? Yeah, it's, yes, it's well, not, but how many, how many... Is the question here whether or not we want a site plan? Is that the question? It's the recommendation to the ZBA yeah. on their decision. If we want to, if we would do a site plan review, yeah, I just we would say that too. Um, but <laughs> in terms of weighing in on... I don't, if I may, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I don't know that we would need a full-fledged site plan review, but I would like to see... A plan that shows parking um, for employee parking as opposed to commercial van parking, and it it um, it doesn't beg a traffic study. But there's two driveways awful close together right there. Oh yeah, and uh, and it then, sure is. and that's going to be I would imagine there's going to be substantially more traffic coming in and out of that 
location than there has been in the past, mm -hmm. unless they were the best real estate agents in the world and had 100 people come in today. But, but you know what I mean? There's, yeah, there's gotta they're, be. They're, you know, too, if you get into it there, <clears throat> the, the aerial doesn't show at all. Parking, you can't see it because of the trees. But if you notice the throat of the, of the curb cut, it's like three times you know, the allowed cost. Well, well, now, again, it's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, 40 that's 50. What was, that was what was there. Yeah, but it's yeah. what's there. But I'm yeah. saying that's problematic, too, yeah. if you, <sighs> you have trucks coming out of there, like vans and everything. The only, the only good thing about it is that that building sets back a ways. Exactly. So you got good yeah. visibility. It's not like right up there. Yeah, yeah. you got good visibility both ways pulling out. But that's all I would say. I mean, just to make sure they have parking. Yeah. I mean, it is a change in use, so normally we would ask for a site plan for a change in use if there would be a reason to not do that. I, you know, yeah, I think we need to do a waiver for, for site plan the, the building is quite large. It's how yeah. many employees are going to be sitting in that building during the day. Well, it's got multiple floors. There's, there's, yeah. there's about eight different here, offices. It's three floors, right? If there's only 10 vans and eight offices, everyone driving could have their own office. <laughs> the question is, are, are the people in those vans out all day? And are there other people going to be in those offices? In did you, words, Danielle, did you say you thought we should do a site plan review? I'm just saying that the zoning says that for changing use in highway business, actually anywhere. It, it normally does require that. If okay. you don't want to, you can you probably could do a waiver from asking yeah. for a site plan review. Uh, I don't know. I think we need one to make sure about I, I mean if you ask for parking, that's site plan. Yeah. You know, so I think I think they need to come with a site plan review and, and the question is is how many people are gonna be working in, in the offices and where where are the van drivers? Are they out all day? Yeah. Well, then, in and out? It sounds like they're kind of on call, but they, they in other words, you know, since, yeah. since all of these people that they're going to pick up probably don't have an appointment at the exact same time, you would then. that means that the vans will be coming and going at different <sighs> times. Like if someone's right. got a seven o'clock appointment, the van's going to leave there at six and pick them up, bring their appointment for an hour, and then come back right. and then pick up their next job if there's a next job. I would assume that's how it would work. So they'll be in and out all day long. So that could yeah. be quite a few. Quite a few trips, if you know what I mean, in and right. out of that location. Right. And with that, with that, and with that turn in for stop and shop and and everything and everything right. So right, when you right look there. And, and you look at this at the parking they got here, they have 21 parking spaces. Yeah. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. One person in the office that takes up the 21st parking space, and then you got 10 people, and you got to you got to think of the max, right? Well, there's a parking spot out front too. Normally, no, they're, 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 they're counting. They one, count two, three, four. Four. They count those. Yeah. So. Well, the, so the real, so yeah, yeah. I mean, and just, I'm not trying to be hard. I mean, I want to keep yeah, business yeah. on Main Street, but if they don't have the parking, where are they going to park? Yeah. I, I know they'll park. They park next door. Yeah, yeah. And there's not enough room there all the time. And. It's private property. Yeah. So I'm sure the people that own that parking lot over there would uh, make a deal with them. It'll be expensive. I'm um, sure. I'm sure they would. This space. This space. My other my other concern again again is um, coming out of there making a left hand turn. It's not, not going to be easy. The same thing. <laughs> you not can't make easy. you can't make a right hand turn only. But, uh, you almost want to. Positive again, they have that large throat so they can kind of angle the car and yeah. the van and get out of there. I'm not saying that the application is for a special permit, but this is a special permit use. And I don't know exactly what special permit is. Does the ZBA remember back here? And that's, did the ZBA said they had to come here? or No, this is this is. The CBA applications that we get copies of. Oh, okay. All right, so it's just that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I don't see enough parking there right now. I don't know how wide those parking spaces are. Oh, you okay. don't know how much more room there is back there, land wise. That that's usable. Yeah. I mean there's room if you look at if you look at the overhead, it looks like there's some room there. Yeah. Um, I think maybe site plan would get us all those answers. Yes. 
says that a special permit available for school buses. For what school bus? School buses are a uh, use that's available by special permit, <coughs> but it says school bus. There's no other livery use or bus use that's available. Yeah. So I don't know how they would get a special permit. Mm. <coughs> but there's no um, restriction against livery use. It's not mentioned. So in our zoning, it's it's exclusive zoning. So it's not mentioned. As if it's not mentioned, it's excluded. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless it's similar enough to some other listed use, I just I don't I don't see it. But I, I mean I don't know. Is that what puts it into the special permit category? No, that's not a special permit. <laughs> It, because there are a list of special permit uses. If it's not available as a special permit use, we don't have use variances. So, mm -hmm. um, it's so not, they're not supposed to be there at all. I don't, I don't see it. I'm not a zoning you know, right. enforcer, but it would be my interpretation, but it's not my opinion that counts on that. Um, anyway. I, I agree with you, Warren. I think we need to have them in for site plan review. Um, well, if it's not allowed, though, what's the point? Um, I mean, I mean, can they? So yes, the um, board of appeals would have to give them a use variance of some we kind. We don't do our zoning doesn't allow for use. Variance. Yeah, well, there you go. So how do how do we? You have to change. The zone. Uh, maybe maybe in, maybe in your comment back to them, mm -hmm. you say that if this was a allowed use, we would require a site plan review. Mm -hmm. And if you deem it's a well, let, use on the zoning. I think we got it's a, their job, not ours. I think we got a question to ask, and maybe it's it's one. If the school bus situation, if the school bus analogy is is, uh, I think we have to. I would have to ask town council if if they can come in under the school bus kind of thing. Does it say the transportation school bus? They're what? They're ambulatory. No, they're just transportation. They're livery. Well, yeah. It's, I mean, we we got. Do we have a taxi? Got, no, it's pretty transportation out there. Yeah, but that's school. How about taxis? Do we have taxis? I don't see it. We used to have a taxi town. Yeah, we used to have a taxi. Yeah. Where were they located out of one? Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you because it's before me. I think they were over in the center of town. I'm not pretty over, sure. Over at the old side of Mike Hattery's gas yeah. station. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. That's where they were at. So that was a local. That was local, yeah. Yeah, so that was different. I mean, we can just make a comment that we're not seeing the zoning where it's a special permit use, um, but and leave it at that, and then say and if, you, if it is there. deemed to be a special permit use, we would ask for Yeah, I, so I think at, that's what we do, Danielle. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what we do. So what's that? Is what she just said. Reality. <laughs> you know, if they deem it. There's a special permit use. They're going to come to us for site plan review. That's all. Well, all right. And we can't we can't opine on that because it's out of our jurisdiction. Right. Uh, if they can actually do what they want to do. Well, um, that's that's it's a little bit of a sticky wicket here. Um, it is. I mean, if it's not allowed, and if it's if it's not if it's not allowed, then it's automatically excluded. <coughs> what would, well, I guess the first thing to do is what's the classification? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. um, uh, you can, you can, um, you can do you want to, do you want to, yeah, okay. sure. That's fine. You can hey, uh, Brad, could you unlock the door because it's locked? Oh. Thank you. Bruce, Bruce is trying there. to get in. The money man is trying to get in the door. <laughs> Let it. Sorry about that. How are you doing? Don't, <laughs> Don't shut it, it'll, it'll just lock if you do. Nobody else will get, be able to get in. So, what, you know, the, I understand what you're saying, Warren. There may be, we, we need to determine what the classification of this use is. Mm -hmm. And then whether or not we can fit this classification, fit this use into one of the classifications that are allowed. Right. And at that point, you could do a site plan review. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, so who determines the classification that this falls under? The building inspector. Building inspector and doesn't. And then if and, and they the disagree with the decision, they can appeal that decision. Right. Well, if the building inspector decides that it falls under the school bus kind of uh, classification, then nobody's going to be unhappy. They'll just forge ahead with a site plan. Right. Yeah. 
-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's... Well, people who don't want taxi and van livery services along Main Street might be unhappy that we're not following the uh, but it's, but it's, for, it's, for, it's for elderly and for disabled people. I don't know how much objection. I get, get it, but is this the only, is this the highest and best use for to... A real estate office? Or just even on 28 to have a storage area for yeah. vans? I mean, is that, is that where we're at? Well, like we're, again, we're in a situation where that's a business that doesn't need sewer. We have minimal amount of impact. Yeah, so one less, uh, one less business to pay for the sewer. <laughs> well, I mean, it would have. To I'm just saying, I, I, I'm not it's looking for ways to help. Um, if the zoning is doesn't allow it right now, and what we're trying to do on Main Street is to try to make it better, I, I don't know why we would like bend over backwards to allow a use that's not in the zoning. Right. right. Now. But see, we can't. Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying. I'm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's right. Right. Go by the zoning. That's the zoning right now. So yeah. Jerry Noel is the officer. He'll decide on it. Yeah, we're not necessarily and trying to get over. Well, I Jerry don't think we're trying to yes, get over backwards. We're trying to find so. out. Right, but we need to that's find my out. opinion. Yeah, we need to find out. And and we can't we can't say that it's classified this because it's not black and white. So do you do you think that the building inspector would determine the classification? Yeah. Okay, so let's let him do that. So what did they say? If the building if the building inspector deems this a property is under zoning, the CPC will need to inspect it. Yes. <clears throat> yep. That's, that, that's that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Ten minutes. What else do you want to do? <laughs> do something else. I could have disagreed with you a little longer. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> stretch it out. <laughs> so just a thought. That's fun. Though. I like that. <laughs> what would you like to do? Just pros and cons. I can't help it. <laughs> We have 10 minutes left. What do you I want to do? I have to be careful what I say. Something. You're going to be <laughs> under mic. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Hot mic. Hot mic. Yeah, why don't you? Okay. That'd be good. Um, yeah, so Chris just asked if I would um, just briefly write a few comments about um, just summarizing what I've been observing at the sewer <coughs> workshops that I've been attending. Um, I've been to all of them except the one that conflicted with our last meeting. Um, and so far, I, resident feedback has been pretty, pretty concerned. Um, a lot of, a lot of, pretty serious concerns, um, especially with regard to costs. So um, I, I know that the workshops and meetings are continuing, continuing to, you know, be held. There are two tomorrow, which I'll be attending. Um, and the questions are coming in, you know, um, on the email, which you know, staff is working together to get answers to those uh, questions, um, but. Overall, I, we, there hasn't been a lot of uh, encouraging feedback. It's been it's been more just very serious concerns about the cost. So I know they're looking at options as far as how this gets <coughs> financed, how it gets apportioned, um, you know, who pays for what. But there's right now there's nothing nothing new to share. Um, yeah. But it's I just wanted to let you know what I have been hearing so far. It's, it's this is what I expected. Yeah. This was good. Yeah. We we had when we had the meeting at the new high school there, um, um, where the majority of people that came back way back then were from the pond area, and their con their concerns were the co huge cost of uh, putting sewer into there, mm -hmm. um, and that meeting was primarily negative. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's not. I, I don't think that's on. Like you said. Chris, I think that's not that's expected. That's not unusual, and and sometimes you know trying to rewrite the playbook is not the best way. So there's a lot of other communities that have managed to put this all together and get it to work. Maybe we need to look talk to one of them. And yeah. Joe would be the one to do that. To see, you know, what, what do you? Uh, how do you get people to understand the value of this? Well, if I can, uh, Mr. Chairman, I I'm, I've. Um, heard from a lot of people too that were at these meetings and I'm hearing the same thing. And they echoed a lot of the questions that I had on, on we have the review here is there's a high amount of residential properties along that route. And if they all get to opt out, um, then really, you know, we're really just dumping this on the rest of the town, which is maybe fair, you know, um, that you know that's who benefits. But I think there's the two things that I from talking to people that I see here is missing and it's 
one item you kind of cover in here is like call it property values increasing, making the cost too expensive to to buy property or start a business on Main Street. I think we need to make sure it could be correct, you know. But I mean, thing we need to make sure is look at Reading, look at Andover, consult or have Vincenzo or Steve, and you know, consult with some of the real estate people and find out if that's a true statement. I mean, they have sewer, their commercial properties right on Main Street that have sewer, and, it'll, and a like one would be pretty much downtown on either town, you know, if we're talking about downtown, you know, near Winter Street. So I think we need to counter that, or at least have information, like if that's a really good point, well, you know, the property values along here, right now we're well below that. I think just to get, to give residents a little opinion on that, and the second one is, there's, a, there's talk, but it's very general about how we need to jump on this opportunity. And we need to be a little bit more clear about what it is. So one is we got an engineering grant and the rest of it is really, there's not really lots of money for the rest of it. But what we're preventing is if we did this in the future is the cost of, uh, call it remediation or repairs all along 125 or at least from Merrimack back to the, the line there is what I understand. And that's what I don't think they're doing a good job communicating is there's huge costs. We're piggybacking off the street being opened by Mass Highway. And what's that cost? And is it, do they, did I miss that in the presentation? But like, that's a huge cost. Yeah, they, have, they, have, they have a set of costs. And so they're just kind of making the comment, like we're getting a piggyback. Well, what, do, do the, what's the value of that? It's a huge value. For the last five years. We're not having to do any of the engineering for it. We're not having to do any of the restoration. All that stuff is being done by Mass Highway. From what I understand, you know, I might be wrong. And that's why I think everyone's a little clarity would help. Probably. Yeah. What? Why? Why I asked Danielle to do this is uh, I got a, a, a query from the uh, chairperson of the finance committee on how we stand, and I was uh, we haven't taken an official vote, but I recall, but I think we support sewer from the planning standpoint. Right. Yeah. The financial standpoint, that's why I didn't want them here, the finance committee here, when we got our, you know, our presentation, because I didn't want to get bogged down in the finance. I mean, that's not our thing. We need, you know. There's a double-edged sword here, Chris, that, that's, that's and, 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 you know, and, and Dave addressed some of it. If you put sewer in front of a place, does that make it more valuable? Yeah, uh, well, only if the place that wants to buy the piece of land <laughs> right. needs sewer. That's right. <laughs> if they don't, you know, then um, then then it really doesn't change the value of the property to them at all. So um, oh, they, we have we've done all these studies about whether or not putting sewer in would increase our value and our tax value and more money coming into the town and everything. And to some extent, yeah, I, I believe it would if you kept it in the commercial areas. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's a significant um, a significant amount. But what it would do, and this is just, this is how this is really the sales pitch. Aside from what you said, which is absolutely true, they got to realize the value that they're getting. You know, just to get the pipe here, where we go from there, at some point you're going to need it. Where we go from there is, is another story. But um, but um, they have to understand that there's a. Um, the people that would come in to, to, for this town to grow are going to expect to have sewer. Oh, yeah. right and, for, and to not have it, and to not have it at this point, maybe we get we get and, we and get you know, those money. people that those people that have older systems on Main Street are going to fail at some point. Well, they're not going to come. That was one of the comments. Property. That was one of the comments to Daniel was that um, you know kitties and the shoe there. You know they have. Somebody said we would be able to get more restaurants. And the comment was from some people, there's already restaurants on, on Main Street, but there's a great cost to kitties and the shoe to grand to, grand yeah. Grand. yeah, and, and then what is the upkeep of that? And you know, we have civil engineers here in the audience, but I mean, it's, that's just not such an easy way to Pat, hand. I'm going to put in right. a system well, I think that can that handle Pat a whole Lee restaurant. Sits, Pat Lee is on the EDC. <clears throat> he was sitting here last week and I asked him the question. He said, put it in. 
He'd pay for it. He's going to pay to do it. He's, yeah. he's going to say yes. Because it was almost a half a million dollars for his session. Yeah, you know, because you, you're right. And that was when he poured it in. Yeah. It's huge. And that's a long time You don't want to yeah. do that on, on every property that wants to be no, restored. No, no. It's, it's, it's just it's, crazy. It's a, it's well, not only that, problem. but there's an environmental impact that you avoid. Yeah. So, so I mean, by, by getting these, some of these systems. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've been told that there's a lot of the systems out there in Main Road are in trouble in there, and they. Some of them you've seen, them, well, they were doing the one stop and shop every three years. Yeah. They couldn't seem to keep us in. China Cuisine gets it done, what, every four years? Yeah, well, and then, and then, and then <coughs> the system out of Walmart out there, they've, uh, that's, been, that's been problematic. Did we serve, Danielle, did the, did the group that presented, did they survey the, at least the businesses along the route? They did. They did, and that, that, that work was what FXM did. They compared the increases in property values to, or not the increases, just the, the differences in property values between sewer properties in the surrounding communities versus. So they did that. They did that. Yeah. So that maybe was it's just, I don't know, maybe. And then when I mentioned survey, so they've actually talked to the business and, and said, and so they get a thumbs up or down, I don't need it, I, I want it. Yeah, that was incorporated into FXM's okay. work, but there was a business survey that came out, and um, and that was in the presentation. It was. I gotta look at that. I don't remember that they presented that, but okay. I know that that was informed FXM's yeah. work that they gave to Kleinfelder, which yeah. Happened. But for the record, Dave, I also think that we are going to be responsible for some part of the engineering. As far as our pipe is concerned, right? I think I, that's all yeah, I understood. It, it's it's okay. all yeah, I didn't mean no. I but it didn't mean to miss. We can say it was covered. Yeah, I just mean I think that was one of the grants was for yeah. engineering, right? Yeah. They just need to understand. You know, we, we 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 need to try to make everybody understand the value of that um, if we're going to get a vote on it. So yeah. it's a it's a big value. Even if we that even that it's only a couple hundred thousand dollars, but quarter month, a month. month the state picks up. It's what? Is all what they pick up? I right did. It's a very short distance set from yeah. picking up. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Back. It's 125 to, okay. you know, 125 again. and 114 come together. And that's that's what they do, 114 down to to the, before the bridge, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so we still have to cross the bridge and then go on. Right. But that little stretch is a lot of money. Because it's really a difficult area. There's lots of stuff going on, right? Now. Yeah, yeah. In ledge. Well, <coughs> so. it's going to be, it's always, I, you know, the reason I brought up that other meeting is because, this, this, to, just to emphasize that it's always been a tough sell. Oh, yeah. And uh, because, because it's, and many times it's um, a lack of understanding. Uh, what it would uh, what, yeah. what would happen mm -hmm. and yeah. what the value of it is. <clears throat> There's a very real value to it if your town is going to grow, and you're going to be environmentally conscious, you know, so conscious, and, and, and you know, especially areas like the pond areas, you know, just um, that's a that's where it's, the rest of this town is probably never going to be sued because the rest of the town is the, 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 not all of it, the majority of the rest of the town is. Is um, suitable for septic systems. Right. Yeah. All right. So. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> and that was my update. My planning administrator update on your planning business. So I should have said. That's it. Anyway, that's it. Um, it's eight o'clock. Is Ryan on online? Yes. Yes, he is. He's here. Hi, Ryan. There we go. I just had to hear your voice. Lots I trust time. Danielle, but we got to make sure. I don't know why the participants aren't appearing on the screen. They're appearing uh, here, but I don't know why they're not. Why they're I got to get some other screens. Oh, you're right. Okay. Okay. Is that this one? Yeah, you're going to go underneath it, I think. Okay. And then the <coughs> there you go. <coughs> I, found the, I found the participants. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to do this so we can see this one. Mike did it two weeks ago, so if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> okay, 
I'm right. just going to leave this up so I can track if anyone's trying to get in. Yes. So, 146, 150. Good evening. Brad Latham. Have a seat next to the microphone. For the record, my name is Brad Latham. I'm here with Bruce Wheeler, who is trustee of QB McLean Realty Trust, uh, Peter Ogren and Joe Grillo of Hayes Engineering, and Tom Miner of Park Landscape. We will not take a lot of your time tonight, but we wanted to come and just give you an update of where we are since the, uh, since the last meeting. Uh, and we have a few comments in that regard. Uh, one item that we uh, could have, I'm not sure whether the board needs to approve with the peer review, but uh, we, okay, we're, we're satisfied with it, so hopefully the peer review can start their process. Yes, we'll fund that um, based upon the terms of the contract. <coughs> so I'm gonna ask at this time if, if Peter would start off and just give an overview of what's happened since the last time in the engineering area. Yeah, we, we uh, the last time we met, we said we had a few things to work out with the fire chief as far as the site plan. For that reason, we thought it important to come before you again. We had had an opportunity to uh, meet with uh, <coughs> Deputy Chief Galvin and uh, determine what uh, uh, what he would like to see for access. And Joe, if you could put up that uh, fire department access. This shows the uh, fire department access plan. If you recall, initially we had a much smaller circle and his concern was basically that they could get their largest vehicle uh, around the circle without doing a three-point turn. Last time I had presented it as a three-point turn requirement, and uh, he didn't uh, disapprove that, but he didn't, it wasn't his favorite, and so we said, well, let's go back and take a look at it. He sent us the actual specifications on his pumper truck, which turned out to be the, the more critical of the two trucks, and uh, we came up with this as a design, and you can see where we've got the... Uh, the pump and truck coming in here and going around. Okay, Joe can do it. Yeah. <laughs> going around the circle. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons you can do it in a circle that size is because we're having the truck enter tangentially on the uh, outside perimeter of the circle. I see Warren, you're shaking your head. Yes, that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. And you probably have plenty of trucks, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, to, to, to go over the changes that were made as a result of this, Joe, if you go to the next slide. Um, there were a couple of other things, whoops. There were a couple of other things that were mentioned. This shows you the difference in geometry. It meant shaking the geometry all around a little bit because you can see where the smaller circle was and how it entered on kind of the wrong side of the circle, not tangentially, and that kind of led to the three-point turn. Uh, it meant changing the location of the uh, handicapped spaces, although I personally think they relate better to both buildings now. Uh, and then there were a couple of other things that uh, came up that we thought you should see that we've added to the plan. Um, there was talk about a crosswalk the last time, and Joe, if you could go up. Uh, Bruce is committed to doing a uh, pedestrian activated crosswalk, signal activated crosswalk, so there'd be a button activated where uh, you'd press a button and a flash would flash, or maybe the red and yellow light, I don't know, whatever the police department would like to see. Uh, and that would be on, on each lane so that people could cross safely. And that, that would serve as both our, our uh, residents who would like to go, I think, either to the Dunkin' Donuts or the, uh, or the uh, park, whichever, uh, whichever way they want to go, either east or west on Park Street. Um, and then also the people that mentioned that they try to cross on a crosswalk that does occur some distance down and is kind of dangerous. This would have good sight distance and, and uh, an activated signal. We also uh, changed the location of the hydrant. The proposed hydrant was uh, out on the street and uh, the, the uh, fire chief indicated that he would not use that hydrant. He wanted a hydrant that's located in the location that we show here where when he brings his pumper in, he can hook the pumper up to it and hook up to the building as well, which the water service to the building comes in just above at the top of your, your screen there. Um, I think that, Joe, did I cover everything that we... Um, there's some talk about keeping people out of this fire, uh, emergency fire access. Oh, yeah. So we're proposing a breakable plastic fence that the truck can just go through and break if there's a fire. Like Batman? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it would be a plastic uh, chain, and actually, uh, was mentioned last time, was there any uh, 
any curb there. And there's no curb at all on that whole section because that was in front of the automotive use. It's just, uh, it's a, in fact, there's no differentiation for the sidewalk. It's paved right from the edge of pavement through. So, that, and he was okay with that. He actually said he would accept a lock box, uh, not a Knox box with a key, but uh, I think from a fire department standpoint, this is better. And uh, as far as he mentioned plowing, as far as taking it down, it's easy enough. We'll, we'll be able to undo the chain. And I can't, I mean, the only thing that I think anybody was concerned about was uh, somebody inadvertently going in there. They won't go if the chain is there. Uh, and if somebody wants to unlock the chain and go in there, that would be a real trespass, I think. So. Warren, you had a question? Yeah, um, I also noticed in the fire department that they talked about um, address, about they wanted to keep the 150 address. And do you, uh, yeah. uh, what do you, so what are you gonna, you guys gonna use like 148 as your address? Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll figure out the 146, 148, maybe, maybe the one building is 146, the other building oh, okay. is 148. I think we only need two addresses, so that, that's completely fine. Yeah, I should also sorry. maybe do an A and yeah, B if yeah. you had to. When I read through it, I was like, that's, uh, that's interesting that they, they said they pirated our address. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't take their address from <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I was just wondering how you worked that out. You know, so. I'll look into it at the town hall and, and see what the process is to, uh, so it doesn't slip through the cracks. Yep, good. Thank you. Uh, the other thing that I think would be helpful <coughs> is that uh, we did review the uh, consultant's uh, uh, proposal to the town, and we worked with Gia Grandi before, and I know he lived in town. I assume he still does. Uh, but I think it would be helpful in this instance if we could set up something with Danielle and uh, uh, Leah Basbane so that we could s sort of go over the plans and what we're trying to accomplish so that we don't get uh, a bunch of review that's stuff that we've already considered or, or how we're going to handle. I mean, I'll just give you an example. I hate to see him spend time saying we've got five parking spaces that are in the setback and it's a violation of zoning when we've already told everybody that's part of the plan. It was something that occurred when, when the geometries changed around and we didn't realize it when, when the zoning was drafted. So uh, uh, we know that, you know, he knows where we're at on, on the same page. And Danielle's shaking her head. I think we can probably accomplish that. But we never sit down and discuss the project without the permission of the, the board officer. Right, right, right. We'll also make sure that the updated plan is here to staff so that they can share with you. Design view is not looking at the other way. Right. And I it's think always, always good, good thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All trees. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> we just had a, f just wanted to go over the uh, few changes we made. Uh, Bruce met with the uh, one of the abutters, and we've had discussions about uh, adding a privacy screen at his request there for his for his backyard. Mm -hmm. So we've added uh, ten green giant junipers along that property line, fast growing evergreens, um, somewhat deer resist deer resistant. So they'll. Uh, so and nothing is depending on how bad, depending on how bad the winter is. Yeah, actually, they've done pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like a shot. It's always nice to say, but when they're hungry, they're hungry. Yep. Um, and we've uh, made some changes to the, sh the sh shrub planting beds uh, based on Peter's uh, new configuration for the parking and, and drop off. And if you see this red line here, that is the, uh, the uh, site distance. It, line that he provided us so we've uh, pulled all our trees back and uh, the shrubs that are in that are, are really low growing perennials or some uh, low growing evergreen shrubs that can be pruned to a, a two foot height um, and that that is uh, basically the only revisions we've made to this this plan maybe three back in the circle you get your tree back in the circle. Uh, now. Yes, I got my tree back. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, can I have your name, please? And company? Oh, I'm sorry. Tom Miner, Hawk Design, Landscape Architects. Thank you. That's pretty much what we had to share tonight. Um, 
we want it possible if you when you're through with any question you may have tonight, if we could continue for about a month if you'd be uh, in peer review to finish his work and, and <coughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Would you put us in <coughs> December? So we're <coughs> uh, first of November, see. so November first now. December sixth, would that be sure, great? That'd be great. I also would like to leave you two paper copies and I, I know uh, I sent you an email before and you said you could take that you didn't need 13. We don't need 13. <laughs> Please. I got that. But I assume you'd like one. These things are done that away with that. that. So, yeah. then I guess. Yeah. Give it to us on a flash <laughs> yeah. that, that That works too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. They're cheaper than the paper. Yeah. Uh, flash drives. Yeah. Cheaper than paper. But well, we sent an email uh, yeah. along with it, which she had said that that would be sufficient. Don't make 13 copies. Yeah, we don't need, I don't think 13 is needed anymore. But I think we should provide at least one paper ah. copy for the record. Mm -hmm. And also to show people. Yeah, people come in, we can, they can unroll it and show it right away. Right, right. Instead of having to pull it up on a computer, which right. we have one right there too. <clears throat> You still want to monitor, right? I mean, I think we're going to be. Anyone else? Uh, sure, I mean, if that's what. Like, I mean, at the end, though. Yeah, yeah, we'll worry about yeah. that. We'll worry about that. We'll yeah. provide it on my lot if you want. I mean, that might be a good record drawing for you. But yeah, but you'll yeah. need a my lot to file, though, won't you? What's that? Won't you need a my lot to file? Well, this doesn't get filed with the registry. It's mm -hmm. not a land plan, so mm -hmm. it's a site plan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'd be good to so have the Um. So Peter, you mentioned to the crosswalk and, and, I, and I love that idea too. And I think with the sight line improved, it'll be, it's a, it's a great placement. I think it's always a more natural spot to be in versus the one that's about 50 feet down or east. And so I did have, I did have an exchange with Sergeant Howe and you know, he, he's open to the idea and we have to kind of explore, but I think we should look at and really maybe not part of this project, but the one that is existing right now, about 50 feet down, I think that's a problem. It still remains a problem. We're not, you're not necessarily gonna be adding control to that or lights to that. So, and it's only 50 feet down from a new one that we're gonna put in place. So I'm not sure, Danielle, you know, state, 62 State Road, I don't know how it works. Can you take, a, can you take crosswalk away? Uh, there's certainly not a lot of work to do. You know, it's not the like state, it, the state probably put that in. They well, that's the what I mean. So I'm not sure the process. And, <clears throat> and Sergeant Howe said he kind of he, he was off this week, but he's going to be back. Well, is that a state highway or is that a state number? County road. I think it's a state number. County, county, county road. It's a county road. County, yeah. it's not state. It's just it's a numbered number. road. It's, it's a numbered road. Yeah. 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 Okay. But so they re state the state rebuilt it. Yeah, they do. But they do that with the, the uh, cherry sheet funds. Yeah. You know, yeah. to come back to the city or town. So I think it's under local control, yeah. and I assume that you'd be willing to remove that sidewalk. I would. You know. Yeah. Thank I, you, Mr. It doesn't Brown. do anything because I think it's there. Well, it doesn't. Really if if you come out, if you come out of the the meeting spaces the library has, you come out into that parking lot, and then you will go across there. But yeah. it's so. Placed, but for the rest of the library, you're coming out the front door. Yeah, you want to come out the front, and then with joining into this development. So but I think it, it was it was put there, there because of the excessive speeds and the lack of a sight line. Yeah. Right. If you put it at the top of the hill when there was no sight line, you yeah, were yeah. you were getting like forty feet closer to getting hit. Right. Yeah, so right. now you know, but yeah, no, no, it'll, it'll help. Mr. Boniface, who was on last week, and another uh -huh. gentleman, Adam, I think at one forty-eight, they both said they're in fear for the life getting on that crosswalk. So I think. The best thing is to get rid of it. It's stamp concrete right. or whatever. So get rid of it. Use the new one. But that's yeah, six exactly. out too. If it's everyone, I hope would be happy. And I'm not sure if anyone in your office, Peter, Joe, you talked to them at all. Those those two people that were on the call. But I let Adam yeah. know. Okay, cool. I right. communicated with him about the order variety. And Great. I, I oh, okay, him, on the I ten hour variety. Know that we were going to have a, Great. A, 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 a manually signal. Yeah. Manual signal at the at the new crosswalk, so he he's aware of it. Great, um, thanks, Bruce. Sure. Yeah, and I I didn't reach out to them, you know, but I did when I did reach out to Sergeant Howe. I mentioned the two gentlemen. I had their names, but I didn't have Adam's last name. I knew his address though. And yeah. He said they they were yeah, pretty critical of how the, the safety of it. So I think that would be the best thing. 
But um, yeah, I think that'd be great for us. So get rid of that. that get rid of that one. It's a good <clears> idea. Yeah. With with the with one that has its manual signals, that's okay. I mean, I go by the one at uh, Merrimack College all the time. All the time, yeah. Me too. And the kids are they actually use the button. There's some always cut behind. Yeah. But usually they're cutting across when there's red lights. Yeah. And the traffic's already stopped. Um, so they are they are thinking about it. But most yeah. kids go to that crosswalk and use that use the button and wait. And you know it's like a, it's like any. Any cross light, you gotta wait. I think you're thinking more along the lines of the poles with the yellow flashing lights on. Yeah, them. Oh, yeah. they have one. Uh, yeah, these are be just lower ones. And, uh, I think, right? You know, Andover. Yeah, yeah and that's fine because it's not a it's not a highway speed. It's not a speed. It's right. It's, yeah. it's only when someone's crossing. And right. It goes quick. So right. It gets yeah. people across. Yeah. It's two lanes instead of four lanes or four and a half lanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's what's on one fourteen? So yeah, four. So yeah. that's a that's a major roadway. This is not. So I, I, I think people will use that. The people that are concerned about the traffic will use it, and then some won't. It's just anywhere. So people people jaywalk all the time. So it doesn't really matter. If they're going to jaywalk, they're going to jaywalk. I think they'll use it. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. That's all I got, though. I'll thank you for doing all the moves that we asked about. So. Any, anything else from in-house that we to ask for like Ryan, do you have any questions? Mr. Carroll? There he is. No, I uh I made a nice job of wrapping all the comments from last time, so it was good. Thank you. Good. And then we have one other. Mr. Reeves, do you have any comments? Actually you just bottom with everything. Okay, great. But I like I like the uh, the, the changes to the site as well. I think it uh, makes some major improvement. All right. Thank Good. You. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm good, Daniel. Debbie, you got everybody's name, Debbie. Okay. All right, gentlemen. So we're gonna December this, 6th. December sixth at eight eight p.m. Okay. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, you guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Oh, don't rush it. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't see him until after then. Yeah, I know. It's understandable. So I thought, yeah, I know. <laughs> At least he didn't say Christmas. No, yeah, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Good night now. Take care, guys. Well, Take care, Peter. Yeah. Thank you. All right. What else we have? We have that. We have the one, one last one. The we have one ninety-seven. Yep. Oh yeah, an MBTA. Oh, an MBTA. Yep. So All right, Danielle, what's 197? 197? So, just um, to explain the background of this a little bit. Um, oh, do you want me to? Thank you, Phil. Um, the parking thing. <laughs> the, um, over the summer, 197 Main Street had requested um, a minor modification to their previously approved site plan um, in order to allow outdoor storage, which is only allowed um, by the CPC for the, the site plan review process. So the outdoor storage areas were shown and the CPC um, approved that um, as a minor modification um, <coughs> with the understanding that um, they also needed to obtain a special permit for, for the landscaping use that was associated with it from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The applicant then went to the Zoning Board of Appeals, applied for the special permit for that landscaping use, and um, the ZBA did grant the special permit, but under the condition that they move the outdoor storage area to a different location, um, and as a result of that new location, I have asked them to come back in for site plan review to, to modify their site plan. Oh. <laughs> you know, and I gotta say, what the the little red square that's drawn on this plan near uh, Plymouth Street, that was a can what what's supposed to go there? What's I supposed to go? Yeah, what what is well, this? What are the CBAs? Oh. Are they got to use that for the parking area for their. I mean, the parking spaces are the striped. No, no, no. I mean, uh, I have a I have a question. Do Do you remember back when? Yeah, yeah. You but but this? I have, my question is, did the ZBA <coughs> say why they moved this? Why did they? Did, I mean, they had to have a reason. They didn't just arbitrarily come through it out someplace else. Well, I did ask about that. 
because oh, I great. got the decision, which should be in the share pile. It is. It is. Um, but the decision doesn't say why. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't say. Um, just, just it says some about. Uh, I didn't see anything. Uh, I, that's what I was wondering. Resident say oh, or something. Like they just wanted to move it, but they didn't say right. why they moved it. Right. And they, so they put it in, and they took about eight parking spaces away. Well, they, yeah, that's that's my point. What what was the? There had to be a, a fairly <coughs> substantial reason to give up eight parking spaces. Right, and I don't know if they could because we put those three behind the building. Yeah. So that they would qualify for parking. Right. And, and there's a, a blocked. I think they're blocked. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. That parking area in the back of the building is addressed in the ZBA decision. They want the applicant's truck and trailer shall be parked within the big parking area at the rear of the premises, as shown on the plan submitted. To the so we're going to put storage over near that limited sideline. So I, I actually asked the applicant about <sighs> this, and he said that there's always been. What does his correspondent say? Um, my question about that. Just let it get loaded. <laughs> Still loading. <laughs> I told you it took a long time to load that stuff, didn't it? Yeah, actually. Once I mean, you loaded up the other stuff, it came right. Well, well, Danielle's doing that too. I encourage you, um, you, you both to just go by there too, because that area where they show, um, you know, the, the upper rectangular area is in a recessed um, you know, it is a parking area, that's one, but it is in a recessed area that has stone walls and, and a high wall, like at least eight or, like Plymouth Street is a good eight feet above it. I understand. So that's one thing I'll just notice is I get a little bit that it's it's a nook, and, uh, but I my thing like is about parking spaces for the existing building, is there sufficient parking? Um, yes. I guess my question, and then I do notice, and it's, it's not really represented on this plan or maybe other ones I see, but the entire right side of the of the building is a, a gravel area that has storage of trailers, at least I, I counted six trailers out there that are up on that gravel area right now. Um, I saw masonry products and stuff up there and some pallets already <clears throat> in the area that the ZBA designated not to put them. They're in there right now. Oh, the back. Yeah, pretty much. But, yeah. Um, but anyways, you know, it's, it's so, not like it's not like it's this giant volume. It's a few pallets. But I'm just trying to understand, like, how is this? So when you with the other tenants they have in this building, I'm just trying to understand the compatibility right. of the landscaping right. business. You know, so it's, in, in 1999, that's when this plan was drawn by Anderson. Yeah. That's when they came in here, the site plan review for this building. In the present use, right? Yeah. And we made them add those four parking spaces. Danielle, you weren't here then, were you? Yeah. No. I believe we made them add those four parking spaces because they did not have not enough, enough parking. parking. Right. Right. We're taking out eight or ten parking spaces. They're definitely not going to have enough parking because the ZBA basically, at a whim, said we'll give them the special permit, but you can't use the area. That you've got your site plan review. It just seems like they could get, you know. I wish I could kind of draw it out for people, but it just seems like they could and get. They could get it on the highway business side. So to, if you look at their rectangle where it says employee parking, and there's an, it's kind of an angle. It's probably more about no. It's actually the uh, it's the floodplain line, the hundred the hundred foot buffer. Yep. The hundred foot buffer kind of goes back, and then it, you have this residential line um there and, and i know they were trying to stay away from the 30 foot or they zba wouldn't allow the 30 foot because i guess per the zoning daniel you're allowed to go 30 foot into the yep. the zone that has the lesser hardship or whatever right. they call the, more, the less restrictions restrictions yes, thank, you. More, more thank you thank you yes more yeah. Zone, which yeah would be a resident zone yes. Right, right. And that's what we did. So we're allowed, you know, you're allowed to move into that. And so that's what I saw in, in one of the plans. And now it's kind of back out of that area. But it makes sense, like, to, to get, to leave the parking the way it is and then do some sort of subtractive 
area that's up in that gravel area, like add an area. If it's you own the property, like why not just put it up there? You're talking because the gravel area that leads up to Plymouth Street. It doesn't. It there. It is kind of uh, wooded up near the top of the plan there. Um, oh, like the hill. It's up that hill. Yeah, it's a, it's a hill. It's like a hill. again, that parking oh, yeah, spot. Goes from 102 the, to the dog leg that goes up to Plymouth is dug in a good. It's it's yeah. in eight ten feet into the. Rip wrap stone wall. It's a one to one slope. So. Yeah, and then it again grades away. You can even see the grading lines back up. Um, mm -hmm. And it's more of a wooded area there. So the gravel begins more around the building. It's 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 changed since this uh, drawing though. It's definitely more north now. If, uh, where's north? Yeah, it's north. There's more north, uh, more area that's been carved out north. That's why I'm thinking that's why you would you put it there. You know, you know it looks like there's a lot of parking, but when you take when you go to the pizza place, they have a restaurant. Yeah. So there's parking for that restaurant is incorporated in all this parking. Oh, is it? Yeah. Even, yeah. even all around the building? Cause well, I no, it, you know, it, right. they, use, they utilize some of that parking, yeah. as I recall, for the site plan that we did for that. And we had it, you know, when you, when you get back up there, you don't have a lot of parking that left over. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. I mean, the parking parking with the restaurant seems like it's adequate, you know. Right. Um, but when you get back up to the building, it's just it's, it's just the parking like adjacent, <sighs> and there's a lot of loading going on. So mm -hmm. it's not like every sp every square foot or linear foot along the building is is a is a parking spot. They they have doors. They have other things, and so they're really limited in a lot of ways. So that's why taking away what they carved out up in that little dog leg area to me seems like you'd want to preserve that right and i just think that um and maybe there's a way to help them out but there's a i think you can and they've already carved away some but this where it's showing that heavy topo there i think that could be actually pulled back a little bit and you could you could preserve the employee parking spots and then put in this little 30-foot area for storage yeah, the, 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 the storage area impact did not impact any of the of the parking, yeah. That I recall. Am I correct, Daniel? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm. You know, I'm not trying to stop a business from being a business. No, and I'm not. It's business. not them. Yeah. It's, it's the ZBA is the issue here. Yeah. They, well, didn't, I mean, they didn't even tell us why they wanted to move it, other than they wanted to move it. And well, if we, I'm not mistaken, the building inspector was in favor of what we did. Well, let's just you and know, let's find out, there. right? Let's just find out why what, they I did mean, it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, that was my only us. question. <laughs> I don't know if it's in their minutes or whatever. I actually did ask for the minutes, but yeah. I they weren't ready yet. Okay. Um, okay. Um, use me if you have. If you need, you know, yeah. use my name. No, I, I'm you only know? happy to ask. It's not that. I actually did ask the building inspector what the reason was, and I, I, I think his impression was it was an attempt to respond to neighbors' concerns, but I. I what they did was they, they actually encroached on the neighbors that were complaining about anything happening at this building. Um, oh, wait, so on Plymouth? Yeah, yeah from 1999. Yeah. That, that's, you know, yeah. we have the, the, that's what I was trying to share. It's kind of some history there. Right. People were complaining about the noise and the lights. Right, right. They, they complained about the, about the, it was very, I mean, they had the dumpsters there and everything, they complained about all, all right. the, Remember that? Yeah, they had right. a whole bunch of dumpsters in yeah. there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I went and looked at every one of them. Um, and they claimed they were all empty, but they were Number five number seven Plymouth are the ones that are direct to Butters, and then Three Spring Lane is the one that's off to the right here. Yep. The yeah. property um, to the right. Uh, but know, their house is really far away. Right. When we were trying it? to, we were trying to, I mean, where we put that stuff was away from them. You know, and it's not a noisy thing. You got to start a vehicle up and leave. You know? Mm. In terms of the request that they've made, um, which is to modify the plan to show the outdoor storage in these new areas, well, what should the response be? I guess the request, what the applicant would like, is for the CBC to find that this is a minor modification and then to approve it. I think there are still concerns about those locations. So, should we give? Do you want to give feedback that you, you can't approve that modification without fully understanding the CBA's reasons for making? And change? then they're going to have to give us. They're going to have to tell us they got to act parking if they're going to lose that many parking spaces. Okay. And how many parking spaces are they losing? Okay. Well. You know, 
We know right away. You what's the calculus? Point. What's the parking space? Is it 400? Is it one per 400 square feet? Is that considered? Well, with the rest, you got the restaurant out front. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. It's kind of amazing. So I mean, by the, so by the time you do, but you know, somebody needs to do a comprehensive calculation about how many parking spaces we need, <clears throat> and if there aren't enough. I mean, then they can either go back to what we designed or what we agreed on, because that gives them enough parking spots. Right. So the answer, the answer to the ZBA is, we don't, you know, by doing this, we, we don't think that you end up with enough parking spaces for the site. It's like they took four so a change least. would have to be made to, yeah. to accommodate, to, to provide enough parking spaces. And if, and if that's, and if they say, yeah, okay, fine, that means you need a new site plan, you know? That provides that that puts the stuff where they want it and provides enough parking. I don't know where they're going to find the parking. That's a problem because we couldn't find it back then. That's why. Yeah, we well, that's why we this. put it where we put it is because that way we can maintain the parking. Yeah, that's why they dug out that hill big. Yeah, <laughs> was to put parking there. It, there's something else in the ZBA's conditions of their decision that's a little puzzling to me, which is no deliveries of landscaping materials may be made to the premises. Maybe made what? May, may be made to yeah. the premises. It's kind of hard. I mean, a landscape truck bringing their own stuff there, that's not a... Well, they weren't... When they came to us for the site plan, I don't think they yeah, were having yeah. materials delivered there. They were going to bring materials from a job that was extra there. Like pay. Okay. I mean, that seems... It, 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 but yeah, what they just said yeah. means that the landscape company can't bring their own papers there. Because it's delivery of a But they can bring excess back from a job. It's kind of how it reads. Like, so yeah, we, can't we only needed 12. We bought 700. So we brought. <laughs> just seems very. It just seems they, very they restrictive. <laughs> they bought three pallets. If I was yeah, a landscape yeah, business, I'm like, you think it had right. other places. They bought three pallets. They had a half pallet left over. I understand what they're doing. They can't bring the, pad, the half pallet back. So they're bringing it, they're going to use it on another job. Yeah, maybe. But it does mean that, that they're moving landscape nightmare. materials. So how do they store this stuff? It's also going to cost them more money to put a fence in this area because they're going to have to go through asphalt. <laughs> and, and the gate, I don't know how they're going to do it. Not understanding what it was they were trying to accomplish. I mean, assuming they were just trying to appease a neighbor or something, it's a possibility. As far as placement goes, but um, um, so they 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 need, they need to take into account the, the parking situation. Right. So. And they, they should. They should they they have, at one point, they should have just done. Hey, we can't give you a special permit. Well, I think I want to also ask about. I mean, and I'll give that feedback to the applicant, but I also want to ask um, when do. Do you want to consider this to be a minor modification, or do you want this to be a situation where they actually apply for a new hearing? I think we, we're looking at. A, I if we know. just want, if it's all about parking, we, I don't. We look first, at it. first of all, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah. here. First of all, first of all, we need to talk to the ZBA and find out why they made the change. Can yeah. we change it back? Because if we don't I change it back, we we the, the, then. Then we have a problem. So if they say no, you can't change it back. That's our decision. Fine. Then we have to tell the applicant he's got to start with another site plan because he doesn't have enough parking. Okay. That's because the answer. Because I, I mean, he has applied to us for the minor modification, so I can give him the feedback and say they're not ready to issue a decision because of the following pieces of information we need. Having said all that, though, I, 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 I think it could be considered a minor modification. But it would have to be a new plan, and right. it would have to exactly. show the right that's amount was, of parking. Uh, yeah, that, we don't need right. to be. We don't need to be a. a you know. No, we, we don't, don't need to. No. Be, no, even this, if they have to recalculate, calculate the parking force. Yeah, this is not crazy. Yeah, we don't need to be heavy handed on this, but yeah. we do need to have so a lot of make sure this parking. What, what the big thing is so here? My I, answer, it's it's, it's in the red on the on the drawings. We we went outside the business district zone, zoning district. I think that's what the zoning board came about because they probably don't understand the rule. Well, perhaps not. So per new. Perhaps a quick, quick education. They're all good. I did send them out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we didn't think that after, you did. after this <laughs> came back. I don't know. Jennifer is not. Before. Before. <laughs> so did she knows. So they didn't even, <laughs> probably didn't even. Read so who knows? I know. Yeah, we'll see. I've I've sat in their meetings before when they didn't know me and they don't read the CBC comments on on the. 
So let's, let's, let's just leave it at that. Let's, let's say, listen, you know, okay? I ignore myself, that, too. That's the best way. That's a good answer, Warren. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And, then, and that way, we, we will know what to do as we find out what they're willing to do. Mr. Roy, Mr. Carroll, do you have any comments on that? No, I'm in agreement with the group. I, 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 I got to remember to, I looked up and I saw your name, that's why I'm asking you. And that, Trying not to forget you. Yeah, and I recommend just you, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, just anybody, just you know, because we're driving by that, just pull in there. That it tells you everything. It tells you instead of looking at plans, you'll see exactly yeah. the issues and you'll see the grades. You did too. Yeah, yeah. I, I walked through the dumpsters yeah. that were out there. I'm sure previously you guys did it, so we forced them to come in. Yeah. So, anyways, what's next? Ryan had a comment. I Ryan, I'm sorry. Would you say, sir? Yeah, I, I did take a drive by today. I'm really okay. appropriate. I'm going to agree with the crew. Good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, last thing. That's you, right? MBTA? That's okay. Computer. No, that's the phone. So, uh, MBTA? we're back to you, the MBTA young lady. I just have it on as a running agenda item. I don't really have an update since last time. I'm just continuing to work on the um, application okay. that we discussed. Perfect. Um, so okay. it'll be ready when we have the main deadline. Yes, which will be the end of January. So we have to run that by um, select board. I'm going to send the whole thing to the town administrator so we can share it with the select board. Perfect. Not sure when they'll be ready to look at it, but I just want them to have it. Perfect. Well, we just have to make the date. I know they were very adamant on making that date. Even if they don't get a chance to look and comment. Anything else? Just the- Ms. Warren? Just the- um, and I'm just going back to the to the sewer project. I'm just trying to think about, you know, if we should if we should maybe brainstorm a little with Joe again about about the approach about the approach. Maybe do another a little. I think at, work, at uh, this point it's almost going to be the special town meeting. Well, yeah. And then it's going to have to be after. But we need to. I would get some message messaging out before then because yeah if yeah. we i mean we, we need to talk about how what what's going and there may be some things some some points that are missing here so like yeah. the one they brought up well, I mean, it, it's really what, not they, leaning they, on that yeah and what danielle in the memo the comments i mean that's they're they're there at the workshop so they're gathering those comments and they, they should just be really working be, <laughs> working yeah. those comments <laughs> right yeah, yeah. And I'd get something out in the transcript or Maybe online. they need a hand, so you know? They, yeah, they just need some bulleted, but some reality too, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, the expense is a real yeah. concern to the businesses too. It's real. It but was, since it's, Joe, it's for always instance, been a concern. <clears throat> but for instance, since <sighs> Joe's gone through a few of these super projects, even that context, he'd be a great person to speak at the town meeting, but even in advance of that, there's there is cost to these type of projects, so he, he could help put in context by referencing you know you get the right guy for the job first off yeah he's, been, he's been here and this is what we did in Gloucester this is what we yeah. this, this is what it looked like and this yeah. is what this is kind of what it this is following the same curve yeah <laughs> you know it's that whole like realization of this costs a lot but then he was there to see the backside of it of the benefit and you know, yeah. and, and Absolutely. he's a perfect person to talk about. He is. You know, I talked to him for a while, too, very yeah. knowledgeable too. When you talk cost, material cost, yeah. the materials to go from here all the way out there, it's a lot of materials. Yeah. And and they gotta they have to have a handle on that. They yeah. gotta know what that what that material cost is gonna be. They may be able to lower it because of, of, of gross bonding, but who knows? Um, and, yet, and the other no, thing that maybe you know, right just, now. you know, it's Which not point? just labor. No, it's not. We did this two years ago. We'd be all, well, all maybe three the, years ago. Maybe yeah, the other thing is we need to maybe put define some limits on it. You know, on where we're going with it. I mean, I know that he already did do that, but if you can define, put some limits on it so that we so that we don't get too so much pushback from residential people. I mean, because we basically want it for commercial use. That's yeah. that's, that's our biggest thing. So. So and, and, you know, and basically, yeah, with, and with that lower cost, I mean, because how again, well, how are they how are they doing the T offs of this? Are they putting in a T at everybody as they go, or yeah, you, you tapping in? Or that, and yeah, I've, I've actually installed. 
Yeah. Main well, so still waiting you, line. So how you how you hit this? You put, main? Yeah, you have to put a yeah you have to you have to put a a, a, um, a, a tap right? off to every yeah. single piece of property. So that's what I'm saying. I wonder, not that you're advocating this, but I'm saying I wonder if you just do these taps to at the commercial properties. You know, do you just forego the re residential? Yeah, it's a more expensive tie-in. Yeah. You no, can't. No, you can't. Yeah. I don't think you're allowed you, to. If, if you if you want to penetrate. Well, that well line let me later, let me rephrase let me line. rephrase that. Okay, you you um, as a public project, I believe as a public project you have to provide. Um, uh, a tie for every single property. As a private project, you wouldn't have to, because because um, I've done both. And, right. and in the private one, somebody said, "Nope, don't want it." Well, go right by. When you want it, it's going to cost you, because you're going to have to go and tap that line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've done a bit of that too, so it's not I'm not yeah, expensive. It's, not it's expensive. Easy thing. It's expensive. <clears throat> I was trying to think of a way to reduce so, it. But you know, you you think all these people that. They don't want to tie in. I know. They, you know, they they don't want to they, they don't want to pay for you know this other stuff. Well, when you when you need to replace the septic system and it's how much now warrant for a septic system? Yeah, they're getting pretty expensive. 40, 50 grand? Yeah, the forties now. Yeah. You know, tying into well, this and new. paying their stuff is not going to be forty grand. That's a commercial. No, for regular. Well, that. I think that's a little hard, especially are. for a redo. We're talking small lots of nature. Some of the, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the costs for. Uh, I mean, it's not as bad as a pound of butter these days, but um, some, of the, <laughs> some of the costs, some of the costs are, um, are ridiculous. Some of the pipe that we used to pay nine bucks for, you know, they want seventy-two bucks for, them. same piece of pipe. And it was all over the map for a while, 60, 70, you know, you, you had to shop around. You could find one that was like $10 cheaper, but, but um, still, you know, for a $10 piece of plastic pipe, you know, 10 foot piece of pipe. pipe. is not cheap anymore. Yeah, it was, you know, and then everything associated with it just get right out of hand, every, every single item. And then all of the suppliers of all the different materials from the sand and the stones, and everything, everything just went up. through the roof. And then of course everything's got to be hauled, and so everything's in a truck, and so diesel fuel. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just it's a snowball. Yeah, and it it's snowballed very quickly from from low twenties to the forties, just as he said, just very quickly. When a two by four by eight cost almost eleven dollars a piece, and there were two do there were two dollars and thirty four cents. Right. And eight foot two by four. Right. <laughs> you know, they're trying to, you know, there's, there's, there's got to be a, I, I mean, I believe there's got to be a, 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 there's a bump in the whole thing right now that's artificial. And and I think that at some point that artificial bump will disappear and we'll go back to a little more reasonable pricing. Uh, I don't know about flat, you know, anything with, with, uh, with chemicals in it. Glue. I don't think it's going to come down. Yeah. Plywood. Because because these companies make more money, and you know it was the the, the chemical issues started back when um, all the freeze came to Texas. Mm -hmm. they, they had to rebuild all this stuff. Well, the PVC pipe thing happened when because also in Texas there was that that factory that burned down down yeah, there, and they, they were fire. providing almost half of the PVC pipe in this country. Yeah. And that factory burned to the ground, and I don't know that they've ever got it. Well, the, 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 the big distributors had it, and they were selling what they had. And yeah. Now, now they get to replenish their supply. Yeah. In wood, when the pandemic hit, the, the, before the pandemic hit, the loggers in, in Canada would find an area that was getting infested with beetles. And they would go in and would cut the infested area out and basically surround an island that was clean. Yeah. And then a year or two later, they would go in and cut that. During the pandemic, because nobody could go out there, they weren't working anymore, they weren't able to create those islands anymore. Yeah. And just went through and took out a lot of the, a lot of the wood. A lot of the standing wood is all beetle infected. infested. Yeah. They've actually been cutting a lot of lumber from the states and sending it to Canada mm -hmm. to get it milled. 
we don't have the we don't have the capacity to mill it like yeah. they do up there. So it's going up and coming back. Yeah. That's the reason for cost increase. So yeah. And you know. Yeah. My, so my, I mean so my, the mother business relies on that. So, so the basic point here, <laughs> which we got way off on a tangent, was to try to uh, help maybe help Joe out with his explanations and yeah. and um, and what we've learned and, and uh and maybe to modify his, his approach just a little to help them understand the value, the value that we're getting for the money we're putting up. And um, um, and it's not, I don't think you can realistically claim that the value was in huge tax increases or anything like that. That's not what's going to happen. It's what's going to happen is we're going to, it's quality of life in the town will improve. That's what will happen. It's, it's, it's a and combination of things. You're right. Quality of life for the town. Yeah. Environmental life. Yeah. Well, Main environment, Street has yeah. a lot of wetlands on it. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just hard to put a good system in. Yeah. So That's the it. environmental protection that we get and the quality of life improvements, those things need to be on the. Uh, those and you'll be able to get better services on Main Street also. Yeah. Well, that, that's quality of life. So. Yeah. And you, and you uh, while well, we do have some restaurants, we don't have a real high end one, uh, which we could possibly get. And just, the mix, and just the mixed use thing. We did we have a couple. There's a couple of them that had approached us. A couple of them had approached us that ended up, up over in Walker's Brook. That's right. Because <clears> this was back when we were in between administrators and I was running the yeah. office. They came and, I, and, they, and they, they were like ready to apply and they said, so uh, who's, who's in charge of your suit, water and sewer? I'm like, uh, well, Mark Clark does the water, but we don't have sewer. No sewer? And they, had, well, and they went to Walkersburg Drive instead. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's, yeah, no. Ryan, do you have any comments, sir? Of course he does. Because <laughs> I think we're going to wrap the meeting. That's a wrap. No, I'm good for it. Thank you. All right. Thank anything you, else, Daniel? Nope. Debbie? Nope. All right. It's a wrap. Thank Thanks, you, Phil.